your alternative talk radio contact, the planet, KGRARadio.com. With infinite complacency, people went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, thinning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Thank you so much for coming back on. This is long overdue. I know that I have a lot of people that I'm like, okay, well, this is part one. We need to do part two. And finally, we're getting to your part two because you were on uh, part one was episode 124. And it was, of course, about uh, the darkness rises, real life accounts of the paranormal. And it was, uh, of course, this is James Salcedo. And it was you and uh, was it five or six other folks that worked on that, right? With yeah, the, um, yeah, some friends that I know online uh, submitted their own experiences, and um, yeah, so that's kind of how that happened. So, and, and they're all writer writer friends too. So I was happy to help out with them at least that way. Absolutely, good. Yeah, so here we yeah. are finally for the Darkness Rises Part Two. I mean, I may as well just call it that because it's uh, we're going to be continuing your own personal encounters. Now, are you working on? Because I know you've got a podcast coming up, which we're going to be talking about. But are you also working on um, uh, another book or anything? Well, I have an, another book under the same title, but it's not um, personal experiences. It's actually all my articles that I wrote back when I could still write articles at, at like once a week or once every other week. Um, and it's 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 another book. It's already out. Um, it's called The Darkness Rises paranormal articles and it's also available on amazon so that's kind of i guess it's uh, i guess it'd be more of a companion to um the first one than an actual sequel uh, in a way because it's not it's not individual stories from people right um but i'm thinking now that that may be the last one for a while and i'll just focus on the podcast mainly because it's going to be easier for me to do that overall than try to research things like the way I used to um, because of my eyes, my vision changing and stuff. So yeah, that's um, the plan is mainly to stick with the podcast now, but but I do have that one out, um, and then if you just look at my name on, on Amazon, you'll find that and everything else I've been working on this last couple of years. And uh, if you guys wanted to look him up on Amazon, first name is James and it's Salcedo. Am I saying that right, by the way? I don't know if I've ever asked you that. Salcedo? Yeah. Is it? There- that's exactly right. You have it just right, yeah. Perfect. And that is spelled S-A-L-S-I-D-O for everybody. They can plop that into Amazon and, and find uh, James's works on there. And actually, you know, since I kind of brought it up a little bit, let's talk about the podcast here because I'm very excited that you're you're finally going to do one and you are looking for, and you're doing the, the interview style like I'm doing or are you kind of, uh, you're looking for you know, emails or, or call-ins or what do you, what kind of show are you doing? What's the format? Yeah, it's really going to be, um, emails either of written down accounts or, um, I, I guess however you want to do it, you could record your, yourself talk, talking, sharing your story that way and then send me a, a file of, of that recording. That's going to be most of it. I will have guests on once in a while, um, that I interview um, but they will also be there to promote some of their own work that involves the paranormal, basically just in their writing and things. I have a lot of author friends, and, and so I'll be kind of talking to them here and there. And, and so, yeah, it, but it'll mainly be, um, I guess you'd call it listener stories, even though it hasn't started yet to have listeners, but that's what it's going to be. I'll, I can I figured out I can read the the emails out, out loud if I just transfer the text to a, a Word document. Right. 
you know, that's how I, I did it. I, I've been, I've already started recording now. I'm, I'm um, just so I, I know how I can, how to do it. And, and just so I have a decent amount of episodes already ready for the release day, which is going to be uh, Halloween at some point that day. So that is very fitting. Congratulations on that. Well, yeah, if people want to, you know, get a hold of you, uh, either through the email or to send you some kind of an audio file, where would they do that? Yeah, um, it would be the email or if you find me on Discord, the email is salcedoparanormal at gmail.com. And then uh, and you can send me your stories or questions or whatever. Just I really want to talk to people about all everything strange and unusual. and uh, Focus mainly on, on the spiritual side of the supernatural and paranormal, but but I mean, I'll take you know, I'll listen, I'll listen to or read whatever I, I can I find too, as long as it's interesting. And then I also have a Discord server. I don't know if, if how many people have heard of that, but I have a lot of I have friends on there, and I've i really I find I like it more than Facebook now. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, it's a little bit easier on my eyes overall. Um, there's a lot less ads that you have to to look at all the time and like sponsored stuff. So I, I've, if you look up Salcedo Media, that, that's the name of my profile and also my server on Discord. On Discord, okay. I'll make sure all of that stuff is linked, including your salcedoparanormal at gmail.com. And uh, yeah. remind me around Halloween, I don't think that I'll forget, but, uh, you know, about the release. And I'll make sure to mention that during the intro and, and remind everybody to go check it out. Sure. And I mean, if, um, depending on how... How this goes, I may have to, there may have to be a part three eventually because the two, two things I have to talk about, they may, they may end up being more than an hour or an hour and a half. So we'll have to see how that goes. That's um, good. I like, I mean, part threes are good too. I like that. Yeah. I and have two and we won't, we won't wait so long for the part three. I promise. Well, I appreciate uh, just the <laughs> chance that I know you're, you're really busy with everything and I, I want to get, congratulate you on, on, First of all, being on um, uh, Midnight in the Desert for as long as, as Thank you, you know, that, that was around and you're, you're around that. And, and also um, on becoming an author. Thank uh, you so much. Your, it's funny because I always thought, no, I'll, I'll just be a writer. That's going to be it for me. And and here I am. I've debated for the last year or so about doing the podcast, but I'm very lucky now. I have some friends that have volunteered to help out with, with everything and the um, just the logistics and the, yeah. the sound editing and the just setting up the website and all that kind of stuff. I have some friends that have volunteered up with that, and that's why I'm able to do this uh, this year. Otherwise, it wouldn't. I don't think it'd be happening. <laughs> Once you uh, air on Halloween, are you going weekly or are you going biweekly? What do you? What's the schedule? It'll be at least once a month. It may be biweekly. Um, it will depend on. Really, on, on my friends' schedules is because yeah. they're so busy. I don't want to, and they're they're not charging or asking for anything for this. So um, it'll be at least once a month, maybe twice a month, and then we'll see what happens after the first couple months, few months, as far as whether or not I do more than more than that. Yeah. And so yeah, but at least once a month. It is a lot, and I think one of the biggest things I'll tell people, I get a lot of correspondence about oh i'm starting a podcast you know what what kind of advice do you have for me and i I, i'm always happy to help anybody out because sometimes there's a question about a mic or not that i know so much about it it's just they just want to know what i do so i just tell them what i do and i think one of my biggest words of advice is for people that want to start a podcast is you know i did and but looking back i'm like man it would have been heck of a lot easier to have a massive bank of episodes and this and that if i had just gone uh you know bi-weekly uh, instead yeah. of a weekly when you go weekly oh boy like you just you don't realize before you start doing it how much work it's going to be it's pretty much a second full-time job so i mean yeah, if, I if you really want to you know make it sound great and put the time in and if you're you, you know you're juggling kind of especially the interview style and stuff like that um and not that that's any more or less editing because sometimes when you have call-ins it's the same thing you know a show right. like Derek's or something but it's a lot of editing, a lot of time, and I think that was one of my biggest things. When anybody would contact me, I'm like, make sure that you're ready for a damn near another full time job if you're going weekly. So, I think yeah, my friends that are going to be helping out with this podcast, they actually just recently started one of their own. So that's kind of why I'm I'm um, 
I want to be easy on them because they already have their own that they're working on. So right. Well, that's cool though. So you, then you're just going yeah. to send them the file, and then they can uh, edit it back, and then uh, get it back to you or whatever. They're going to help out with that side. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's and then cool. we'll. Um, I have some friends that are going to help me probably in October. I'll wait until then to get like a website or a page set up for the for the like the podcast and everything. I've already recorded a couple episodes, and I hope to have at least five done before um, before the actual release. I mean, it may end up being more, but we'll see. I'm I'm not covering news because that's just that's gonna be difficult to do. Yeah. Um, so I can. The nice thing about that is I can record these and not mention a little bit. I guess behind the scenes here, not mention what time of the year it is, and it'll still be okay. Um, it will still work for the. Oh release. yeah. Oh, absolutely. They'll be timeless. They will. Um. Well, yeah. Let's jump in here, James. So on the first round. On episode 124, we talked about uh, your uh, quite a bit about your cousin's house, and then some of these interesting uh, paranormal dreams that you you've had. And so this time, I didn't know, you know, where you wanted to start. Like, I don't know if you want to save training center uh, for you know round three, and then just so. start at the apartment, maybe. Yeah, okay. yeah, let's, let's do that. Since, awesome. Um, that's and then I mean we'll see how that goes, and then. I could probably throw in some more dream stuff after that if we have time. And, but, yeah, it would probably be better to save, save the training center for its own thing. Yeah, awesome. I don't know if, ever, if ever, anyone has ever heard this, but I've noticed that in certain places, especially when you move into a place, there can be more activity when you first move in, and then it can kind of die down later on as time goes on overall. I mean, that's not counting extreme cases where things do ramp up. But mine was definitely a case of, more happening when I first moved in, and this was about 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 fifteen years ago now. Amazing to think about sometimes. And but, you, um, and just to confirm, you are in this. This is the apartment that you're sitting in right now that we're talking about, right? Yes, actually it is. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's the furniture is in different places, and some of it's different, but yeah, it's same 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 walls and everything. So I had already had some experiences as I, as we covered in the first episode. That first my first episode on the show. Which it's really amazing to be doing a, a second episode on any podcast. That's really amazing to me. So, just really happy that I'm able to do that. But um, no, I'm happy to have you back. I appreciate you. I just I can't yeah. believe it's been that long since part one. I'm terrible about that stuff. But part three will not take as long. I promise. Oh no problem. But um, I guess the first couple things that happened were little. Um, I was one of the first days I was here, and again I'm I'm terrible with dates, but I um. I used to play solitaire with um, playing cards, and sometimes I would just sit on the floor and and play and just lean against the couch or whatever. And this one day I was doing that, and I was listening to music, and I got a phone call, and so I got up and I talked on the phone, and I sat back down a while later, and I found a paperclip on the floor um, beneath my beneath my legs, basically, and. I don't know how it got there. It was not there when I was sitting down. There were no tables or anything for anything to fall. And being legally blind, I don't really use a lot of paperwork or use paper clips. I don't, I've, I've never bought paper clips, and so I don't know where this thing came from. <laughs> but what was kind of weird about it was it was kind of it was not it was bent out of shape, and. It was almost like an arrow, a double arrow shape. Or another connection I kind of made later is possibly like a, a person shape of like a person. And this is kind of a stretch, but it's kind of something I thought of later. Um, like in a dress with their hair out on either side. Again, I didn't think about that until later, but I kind of wonder because of the next series of things that happened. And um, this also, again, this involves... Uh, dreams. Um, so, for my first two years I lived here, I had a, um, I slept, slept in the bedroom as most people do, but now I sleep in the living room. But um, so I would be I slept I went to bed one night in the bedroom and I had all my lights off and which is how I like it. I'm I'm um, because of my vision it's just easier in my eyes if all the lights are off. And I fell asleep one night and in this dream I woke up kind of. And there was a light on in the living room, and I knew I hadn't left any lights on. And but I was also stuck in the bed; I couldn't really move. 
and I heard someone moving around in the living room, pushing furniture around, almost like shoving it around. And it was a man's voice that I didn't recognize at all. And he was saying, basically saying, where are you? I can't find you. Where did you go? And it didn't make sense to me. But I was also kind of scared because who is this guy that's in my place? How did he get in without me hearing? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, t- it's a small place. It's a one-bedroom apartment. I can get from the front to the back in a, a minute or two. I think I said that in the, the first episode. I just listened to it yesterday, actually. And so I didn't know what was going on. But, of course, the dream faded. I faded it out and, and just slept for a while after that. And I didn't think of anything of it at first. I thought, well, I'm just, I'm just nervous. It's my, that's one of my first places. You know, who knows? So I had that dream. And just time went on, just I would hear little bumps and bangs in the apartment that didn't make sense that were definitely like in the apartment. I've always had that going on here and there, uh, just little noises and stuff. And that was even before I had my, my cat, Logan. So that didn't really make a lot of sense. But the next thing that happened, short time later, this was all like within the first month or two maybe of me moving here, I had just gone out and and done errands one day and I came back home and I had a, a, a couch bed in the living room and I decided to lay down on that. It was easy to get out so it was just a small one. And I, I put on a, I put on a DVD back when DVDs were still pretty big. Mm-hmm. And um, I put on and I fell asleep to this DVD. I think it was one of the X-Men films. It wasn't anything related to anything strange. And I fell asleep, and I woke up because I felt something sitting on the bed next to me, leaning against my leg. And, again, this was surprising because I live alone. And so I kind of half woke up, and I mumbled mumbled something like, who's there? And I heard this young girl, maybe about, not quite a teenager, but around there, laugh. And then she said, how can there be anyone here when you've double locked the door? Mm. Which is something I had done before I had laid down. She said that entire... Wow. Yeah, yeah. So obviously this surprised me, and I sat up really fast in the bed. And as I sat up, the pressure lifted off of my leg and, and, the, and, and the couch bed. But I didn't hear any footsteps, and I opened my eyes, and there was no one else in the room. That was a surprise. It was surprising, but it also didn't feel evil. It didn't feel bad at all. I didn't. I wasn't afraid of the person, but that was my first encounter with this the spirit of this young girl, and so that's kind of how all of that started. And a few nights later, I had another dream uh, that was weird. Now, in between this, I had heard more bumps and and, and sounds, and then there was even one day I, I was I had come home, and as I was closing the door, I heard uh, that same girl's voice, just like talking, but I couldn't understand what she was saying, and then laughing again, and then it faded away. So that was when I was like, okay, well, obviously that's that other day was not just me dreaming. Right. Because I'm totally awake right now, and I just heard that. Now, where, um, where, would, where was the laughing coming from during that s- second incident? Like another part of the apartment, or? It was in the main living room dining room area, which is just around the corner of... of the entrance. I guess I could lay out, give the layout of the apartment real quick. Um, might help. After you get in the front door, there's just this little entry room, and it, it there's a little, I, not even a hallway, but just a little hallway that goes to the right. And then if you turn right, that's the bedroom and bathroom area. And then left, it leads to the rest of the apartment where the uh, living room, dining room is at, and then the kitchen. That's all in the back half. And, yeah, the, the sounds were in the living room, dining room area. But, again, no other sounds of movement when I, when I came in that day and heard, you know, that sound. No doors, no, n- nothing else, just the voice. So, so yeah, that was, that was the first couple things. At first, I didn't put any of this, much of this together until I had a dream one morning. I was, this was back when one of my younger sisters would come over once a week to visit me and stay for the day while her, her dad went to work um, just so that we get to, to visit and stuff. And this was 15 years ago, so she was about, well, about eight or nine years old. 
And so a lot, but she had to come early in the morning because that's when her dad went to work. So she would get here 5.30 in the morning or so. And then a lot of times we would both go back to sleep for a couple of hours. And that's that was the case this one morning. I let her have the bedroom and I would sleep out in the living room on the couch bed. So this one morning after we had both gone back to sleep, I had this really vivid, vivid dream of being in my apartment, but it was like it was on fire and decaying, like it was had been it had been burnt mm. and it was on fire. Not like where I could see the flames, but like I could hear flames and see damage and stuff. And I was I was trying to find my sister in the apartment, but I couldn't find her. And in this dream, I said something that you'll recognize. I said, "Where are you? I can't find you. Where did you go?" Mm. And so I was. I searched through my apartment, which didn't take long, and uh, but I didn't really search the, the bedroom very well, which is interesting. And so, I, but I walked outside, and that and the whole apartment complex was in the same state, was on fire, and I could hear people like shouting, you know, some screaming, and I could hear other people that were obviously the ones causing all the trouble, basically, like almost like I heard people that were afraid and people that were you know, enjoying or, or doing the, the, you know, all, all the, causing all the trouble, like I said. Right. And then that's where the dream ended. But at the, the whole time during the stream, I had this weird sense of it was me, but it wasn't me. And I was looking for my sister, but I wasn't looking for my sister. And now I think that I was that guy just because of that phrase. Right. And my sister was that girl. Um, not that I'm saying a past life thing. I'm just saying that's it was just a dual symbolism kind right. of thing. And so, and I woke up, and as I was waking up from this dream, I saw a a, a girl in a night nightgown that I'm pretty sure was this girl walk by the couch bed, and I saw dark, like long, kind of long, dark brown hair, but I didn't see her face because I she was already past me. Uh, she passed my field of vision, and I was still unable to move yet. And even then, I was afraid to move, and I didn't really want to. I wanted to say something, but I didn't want to because my sister was in the other room, and she was not familiar with any of this stuff yet. And I didn't want to have anything happen that would frighten her. Right. So I basically just had to let this spirit go by and not acknowledge her, even though I'm sure she probably sensed what was going on too because and you were fully awake for that that was not a hundred yeah not a dream right yeah and that was that was really um i I, i'm guessing that if if it hadn't been first thing in the morning my sister would have wondered what was going on with me because i was pretty shocked by all that yeah um but i was also starting to wonder if there was this this girl's spirit trying to tell me a story of what of something, and I think it, um, based on the last couple of things that happened, I'm pretty sure I was pretty sure I was right about that. Now, um, just to just to circle back really quickly, she yeah. walks by you. Uh, did you just lose sight of her? Did she go through a wall? Yeah. Did she go around something? No, I just lost sight of her, and then by the time I sat up, she was she was gone. So I guess she kind of faded away or disappeared. But she was already out of my field of vision by the time she did that. So, yeah, it was. But like I said, this whole time, I never got any um, sense of anything bad from her. Um, I know sometimes there are spirits that can, you know, play tricks and all that kind of stuff. So I always kind of kept that as a a warning or a safeguard in the back of my mind not to um, kind of not to like not provoke, but like kind of not to try to interact a ton extra with what's going on. Um, especially with, like I said, with my sister being there. Um, so yeah, that was, I guess, the second major. Now, the last dream that I had, I guess, in the series was shorter, but it was also more impactful. I was, it was sometime later. I was in the bedroom again, sleeping one night, and I had this dream of sitting in my my closet on the floor, and it was empty. The closet was empty in the dream, even though obviously it was not empty in in real life. And sitting next to me on the floor was this girl. It was like she decided, okay, we, we need to have a face-to-face meeting. And um, the first thing I saw was that familiar nightgown, that old kind of old-fashioned nightgown, and then the dark hair 
And she turned to look at me, and I saw her face. I can't describe her face in very much detail. It's just getting back to my, my low vision and stuff. And I think also now just memory that, that's, that was 15 years ago. But she turned to look at me, and it was like she was – basically, I could tell she was – she had died. Like it was – she was kind of slightly decaying or decayed, um, kind of like what you would see in a horror movie but not extreme. I don't know if that makes any sense. So and she she's we were, literally yeah. just sitting right next to you. And sitting right next to me. And I wanted to say something, but I couldn't because I was so surprised. Mm-hmm. By her appearance or just that she was Yeah. There? Kind of both. Yeah. To be so close and to finally look at her that and be that, yeah, be that close and see her face and everything. Right. That I, I woke up right away from that. And that's kind of when I started to put – the, the pieces together possibly i think that there was a fire wherever she was at i don't think it was this apartment complex just because i've never heard of it being going through a major fire i've never heard of a fire that big in this area anyway at least not in, in recent times i think there was a fire and for whatever reason she ended up hiding or, or getting stuck in a closet and there was someone looking for her and I don't know if that was mm. relative or if it was one of the people that was causing the fire or I don't know any of the other details. But I, I found it the connection there because, like I said, in that dream, I looked in the bedroom, but about the dream about the fire, I looked in the bedroom, but I didn't look at any of the closets for anything or anyone. Isn't, and, it, isn't it so strange, though, how she because you have seen her when you were fully awake as yeah. well as in this dream state. It does yeah. seem like it's, you know, easier for some at least to come to people and show them what they need to show them while, you know, we're in a dream state. But she could do both. Yeah, I th- so, uh, yeah. and um, so that was the last dream. I still continue to have times where, at, like, the, the bumps and knocks were fairly regular back then. I don't know if it was necessarily all her, but they were a lot more common, a lot more frequent. Frequent. Um, especially I noticed a lot of times when I listened to or watched any back when I was still watching TV, whenever I watched any kind of, any kind of paranormal, paranormal stuff, you know, ghost stuff, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it seemed like that was more, um, I would hear those sounds more. So the last thing that happened was just something kind of little, but it was still interesting. After all of this, I was debating if I wanted to try to look into what happened and I was thinking one day, you know, this is without a name, this is going to be hard to do. And so at this point I'd already been listening and, and watching, listening to and watching plenty of uh, stuff on the, about all this. And I had heard of, on a couple of different things where if you just kind of think either talk out loud or just think toward whatever you think is there they can sometimes they can hear that, pick up on that, and sometimes they will answer you. <laughs> At this point, I was like, well, I'm pretty sure she's not bad. Other than surprising me, she didn't do anything bad the whole time. And so I decided, well, I'm going to try asking for her name. And so I did that. I basically said, look, I know you're here. There's someone here. And I'd like to look into this and... and Help if I can, however I can, if I can. Um, but I could use a a name, and I actually got it was the weirdest thing in my my mind. I got this that same girl's voice, but it was almost like a there was like a stutter in it. And I got the the first name was Maggie, and then I got the last name. I don't know if I want to say the last name just because just to be careful. Yeah, that's okay. No. But what is interesting about the last name that I did get is it's the name of a street in my town where I live. Hmm. And not only that, now, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what's funny about that is it is the street over the years has become really well known for houses decorating and really just going over the top with Halloween decorations every year to the point where it's a big event now in this town every year. Hmm. But just the fact that I got a name of a street that's in my town, not even not even a few blocks from where I live, I thought was interesting. And um, and I looked into kind of trying to do research, but again, with 
my my vision, and then also the lo- the place that might have had anything was that very limited hours that were not didn't make it easy for me to get get there, and it just it seemed like it'd be a lot of work that and it might not you know who, who knows how long it would take to do all the work. So how did you get her name though? Did it come to you in a dream, or how did that come about? That was out. That was in the middle of the day. I was just walking around my apartment, and I was just thinking about all this. And I literally just thought, just thought toward toward this girl, I guess, or just around me. I just kind of thought in my mind, you know, I, I'd like to know your name. And that's when I kind of, I just heard it in my mind, uh, like a reply, mm-hmm. but just in my mind. And um, what was interesting about, about that is that was the last time I ever had any interaction with her. Other than maybe one possible time where I was sleeping and I thought I heard a whisper and it sounded possibly like her saying, just, I heard her whispering. I didn't make out everything at first. I heard a phrase and it was, it was her saying, buried by the church. Hmm. And after that, after that one night, I never heard or saw or felt anything from her again directly. Wow. So it's almost like she she just wanted you to know her name, and then once you figured that out, it it almost released her in a way. Is that? I I, yeah, I don't know. It's like she just wanted to get her story to someone. I don't know. Yeah. If maybe the people that lived here before me, a person, there are people over the years that lived here, lived here before me, were not as receptive, or if she was somewhere else in the area and she just sensed me and came over here to tell me that. I don't know, but like I said, after that. I've had other things happen here and there, but I don't feel they're the same thing as, as her. So, I mean, obviously I don't know for sure, but at least the direct communication uh, stopped after that. Hmm. Well, yeah, what other sorts of things then from other entities you think are there? I think so. I think what's funny is I think there's something else that likes my my bedroom closet, the main, the main closet that likes to hang out in there, but not all the time. I never liked that closet at night. I never liked that room at night for some reason. I didn't really like think about why at first until I started kind of listening to more stuff about you know spirits and all that. And but I think there was some someone in there or something in there that liked to just visit visit and stay in that closet from time to time, hmm. and it still does. And well, what do you think it is? Like, what, where, what, how would you even, did you just get a feeling that something that, was in there or did you hear something? Yeah, it's just stuff? a feeling and it's just, it's just, um, it's not like an evil, like I'm going to hurt you kind of thing. It's more like, this is my space. Stay away. Don't come over here, especially at night, especially after it gets dark. Oh, that's disconcerting, especially in your, your bedroom oh. in the closet. Why do they like the closets? It's just, I don't know. Creepy. And it, it, it's, it's it's also one of those things where I think sometimes when I'm listening to par- paranormal stuff, I do get the sense that it comes out <laughs> and likes to stand in my hallway and listen or, or just take in whatever I have on at the time. But sometimes I, I just catch movement, like something just, and it's like a dark, a darkness that I will catch in that little hallway. And... And it won't ever come come toward me. It just comes out into that hallway, and it comes from that bedroom area, and then eventually it'll just not be there. I don't know what it is, but what's really funny about that is years later, I when I talked to my sister about all this stuff when she was an adult, and you know it wasn't going to be quite as scary for her. I do have a ghost cat that likes to show up once in a while. Yes, I do want to hear about the ghost cat. And this happened even before I got my. Uh, living cat, <laughs> my my cat I have now, Logan. I had a couple times where I would be standing by the the back uh, window. I have a, a patio door wall window, and um, I'd just be looking outside. And I would feel a cat walking around my 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 legs and uh, rubbing against them almost. I would feel the air movement. And I would almost feel. It didn't feel like fur, but it was just like something was brushing against my legs. And it would happen for a, a few seconds, and then it would go away. And so that was really interesting. But that wasn't 
I even have that at other places around the apartment just for no reason. I'd be sitting down or, you know, it wasn't when I was moving. It was when I was stationary, which is also interesting. Um, but I didn't see it, the cat itself, until a lot later, years later. I had been out and I was coming home from errands, probably, I think it was just errands. And um, a lot of times Logan will wait at, at the front door. There's a window next to the front door. A uh, full length window, and she'll look outside and and watch me. So I got home and I saw a cat in the window, and but it was sunny outside. It was middle of the daytime, and I thought, oh, it's just Logan standing there by the window. And then it moved out of the way, out of view, and I opened the door. Well, when I opened the door and walked in, Logan was nowhere to be found, right there. I closed the door and everything, and I looked around, and then and she was not. She was not there, and she wasn't leaving the, the entrance. So I went in real fast to the rest of the apartment, and she was asleep on my rocking chair. Mm -hmm. um, That's pretty cool, there. actually, but you were like, uh, Logan, yeah. you just in the window over there. <laughs> and, it was, and, and then I, I kind of played it back over in my mind what happened, and I realized, you know, I had thought, wow, she... Logan looks even brighter colored than usual. Like, I didn't mm. see any of her dark, dark uh, fur on her, but I thought it was just the sunlight. And I was, so that kind of had me wondering, but I hadn't seen this ghost cat as of yet. So, and this was, these things all happen like months and sometimes even years apart. And that's, so I, I forgot about that, even though it was, it was interesting. And this one time, I was sitting in my chair in front of my, my computer listening to something, I forget what now, and I had, I was having a dream, but it wasn't anything, I didn't feel it was anything important, but then it shifted, and it was, all I could see in front of me was this really big, well, not super big, but just a good size uh, white cat, all white, it was just sitting in front of me, and just looking at me, and it was just, I felt like it was really old, and really I don't know about intelligent, but it just felt really old. I got just a sense of it just being from a long time ago. And I started to wake up because it was just, it surprised me so much. And that, that was when I figured out that's the one I saw. That's the thing I saw, the cat I saw in my front window that one day, how many ever months ago it had been. And so I woke up and Logan was actually sitting on my stomach, like in, in my chair. Uh, looking at me now a lot of cats some cats like to be on top of their owners fairly often Logan is not one of those cats. She doesn't do that. She doesn't even like to be lay on me or or get too close to me when I'm like in bed She'll lay by my feet. That's it. So she was a little bit freaked out by, <coughs> the, by the ghost cat at that point then She was she, something was going on and she noticed it and that was just her. Oh, was that Logan? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so She's like, you're talking um, about me? Yeah. So, and I, that was just, but it's so inter interesting because it's not like a, that ghost cat, whatever it is, it's not, I don't sense it here all the time. It just, once in a great while, it just pop in and do something, something like that. So, it's just really. How many times have you seen it? Just those two times. Like I said, I've felt it before from against me, my, my feet or my, my ankles, and I felt, I felt the, um. The air, you know how you can feel when, it, when an animal rushes by your feet. Um, I felt that, you know, that movement of the air a couple of times. But I've only seen it those two times. Once, and 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 <laughs> once in the middle of the day, out and from from inside, uh, from, you know, from outside looking, I, I saw it inside my, my apartment, and then that one time that dream. So that was really interesting how that happened. I I seem to, and I don't know how common this is. I seem to attract. Uh, I know I'm really close to like cat energy. Like I've always been a cat person, and um, I even had one time. It's really funny how I forget how, how many things happen to me in like in my dreams. I just forget that sometimes until I start talking about it. Not long after I moved in here and after I got Logan, I actually I guess about seven years ago or so now. I sleep one night and I had this dream about being in the kitchen. And I was hearing noises on the couch bed in, in the living room, which is just around the, outside the kitchen. 
and I thought it was Logan. So I just said, oh, you know, knock it off, Logan, behave. And I kept on hearing noises, and I was just in the kitchen just looking for something. And I still heard the noises, so I, I said it again, and I looked over at Logan, and I was like, you know, stop it. And on the couch bed, there were two versions of Logan, and they were glaring at each other. And I could just feel that one of them was Logan, and one of them was something not good. Mm. And it was like they were having a face-off. And I woke up from that, and Logan was sitting on the bed looking right at, my, at me, right, right, right at my face. Oh, wow. As I, as I woke up. So I'm 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 starting to think that I, th- I think now that maybe there was something kind of you know it wasn't a, a good a good a uh, friendly cat whatever it was a uh, not so friendly one that was had stopped by and Logan was Logan was not a fan uh, that's for sure yeah well, and I've heard over over the years that you know pets and especially cats are known for kind of being good at defending homes from. That, like from negative, mm-hmm. some negative stuff, and I, I, I do think there's something to that because I, I've had a few times where I've, I've kind of had feelings that, that there was something bad nearby when I, when I was sleeping and woke up and Logan would be awake and on alert and stuff too. Yeah, does she so. ever uh, stare over at the closet? Um, no, because I have that bedroom door closed. I actually don't sleep in the bedroom. And, um, I stopped that a while ago, partly because of of the the closet thing. But also just because I like being out here in the living room where I can get to my laptop and yeah. have whatever I'm not playing, you know, to listen to while I go to sleep and stuff. Um, I kind of turn my living room into my bedroom, too. I have my bed out here and everything. But what's funny is she will stare into the kitchen sometimes for no apparent reason. And always towards the, the back corner where the fridge is at, the, the refrigerator is at. And I can never figure out. Like, I don't always, I usually don't sense anything when she's doing that, but she's looking at something, so. Have you ever tried, she uh, does re- n- not that everybody thinks this is a good idea, I am, I may not even want to do this if I had uh, a lot of activity in my home, but, you know, let, leaving out some kind of recorder for EVPs or uh, another implement to try to, you know, either contact or just get any evidence that you could, have you ever done that? I, I tried it years ago and I didn't really get anything. And also, then I started to hear on different podcasts and just TV shows that you don't always necessarily want to do that in your own home. Yeah. Because you don't know what you'll find. And I mean, it could just take one wrong thing that you find that, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I haven't done that in a long time. I did have, it's not recorded, but I did have one time where one of my friends was over visiting and. It always seemed like when we were together, activity would kind of pick up here. And um, actually, it's a friend I haven't talked to. I haven't seen him in a long time now just because he doesn't live in the area anymore. But um, there was this one time talking about electrical stuff for equipment. equipment. We uh, we had a, he had a flash, little flashlight. It was one of those little, ma- I think it was a mag light, mag light kind of thing. And he had set it on that, on the shelf, a bookshelf, just this one bookshelf one day. And we had recently gone to a presentation at a li- the library near me from a team of, of ghost hunters or invest- paranormal investigators and they had kind of gone over you know what they do and they had done the they had shown the flashlights they use which were similar and how you know if you if you the whole flashlight experiment where you, you know if you you can have them and, and ask whatever is around to turn them on or off for a yes or no answers and that kind of thing and and what's funny is that the library, the lights, the flashlights had gone on at random during this presentation, which was kind of funny. But we had this flashlight out at, my, at home one day, and not long after this 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 uh, presentation, and it was just sitting there, and it turned on on the bookshelf. And my friend and I were just like surprised because it was kind of set so that it could be turned on. It wasn't, we had this idea of maybe trying it one day, but we never actually did it. So it wasn't like, it was set just the way you'd want it for one of those experiments. And it turned on and we were surprised because that never happened before. And so we started kind of talking toward it and, but it was weird because it was very erratic. It never, it never really answered. Uh, There was no like direct communication and we didn't, we didn't learn anything from it. So every time we thought, well, it's it's done now, you know, it turned off, it's it's done for now, it would turn back on for a minute, 
and then do the flashing thing again on and off for a little while. And I did that like three times. Every time we were like, well, it's probably done now. It seems like it's turned off. So that was interesting. Um, that was something I, I just I forgot about until, until we started talking about recording stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. that that can be tricky trying to do that in your own home. So I, I totally understand that where you may not want to hear what is on the other side of that recorder, especially if you put it in a place like your creepy closet where you feel like something is occasionally uh, taking of residence, right? Yeah. Uh, there's some places I'd love to investigate someday, but I mean, like, my own place is not not one of them. Unless I go <laughs> right. out, then, then maybe I do, but now it's... When you have the option to not sleep there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, once it's time to go to sleep, it's like, nobody bother me. I don't need any creepy stuff going on. Well, James, was, yeah. there, was there any of the stories that you wanted to cover uh, with your apartment before we wrap up this second edition? I'm just trying to think. I don't think there's a whole, um, a whole lot else. I, of course, I'll probably think of something after we're done. Cause that's the way it usually goes. But I think that's that's basically it. Yeah, so that's uh, – and like I said, I just hear every once in a while I'll still hear random bumps and bangs. Once in a while I'll see – I guess it'd be orbs, like really small orbs, just for a second. They'll, they'll appear and disappear here and there in places that don't make sense for there to be, for them to be there. But yeah, that's that's really the ghost cat and then the the ghost girl, I guess, are the two main the main things here, and then that thing in the closet. So now, do you talk about those very much? Like, are you wondering just you know speaking this stuff out loud if it'll attract any attention from any of that stuff? Yeah, I don't know. Um, but luckily, so far, I've had I've had enough experiences over the years where it kind of would take a lot to really right. frighten frighten me. <laughs> so right. it's I'm not too worried about that. I'm I think I'm okay. But but uh, uh, I'm also I kind of am not really against it either. If if some stuff did happen at this point, <laughs> so well. And the good news is we've got part three coming up. So if something does happen, then we can give a a good update in in kind of like real time. Because I'd like to get you on. Talking like in a couple of weeks for part three, if if you're um, okay oh, yeah. with that, to talk about uh, oh, yeah. the training center, because I know that you had quite a bit going on at that place, too. So, well, um, give out your your email one more time. And then if people are on Discord, uh, you know, the uh, the Salcedo Media. Yeah, yep. Salcedo Media. Um, and then my email is salcedoparanormal at gmail.com. Yeah, those are the main two places. I am on Facebook. I'm just not on there as much as I used to be. But uh, but yeah, so probably the email and then Discord are the best places. And my, my server on Discord, it's not all uh, about this stuff. It's it's for my writing and for just general. I have a lot of friends that are, are into video games and stuff, so there's some of that there. Uh, it's definitely part of that that server. So. Yeah. Well, awesome. And again, guys, uh, part one, if you want to hear James's first episode on itf is 124 it's called the darkness rises and of course i'll just go ahead and title this the darkness rises part two because i'm just it's so original of me to do that right it's just so exciting of me um <laughs> what's, we'll do, what's we'll funny do is um, soon. yeah what's funny is I'm, i had to name my my podcast it's it's um literally going to be salcedo paranormal because do you have any idea how many podcasts have the word dark or darkness in them? Yeah. In their title? Yeah. It's, it looked I, tough, right? Did you go look in and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is getting yeah. to be almost impossible to come up with something that isn't already taken. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it still works for this stuff. So that's good. Yeah. So I'll see no paranormal, but that rolls off the tongue. I like that. And no yeah, one else like has said, that out hard. there. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Well, yeah. James, I, I appreciate you so so much. I'm I'm very sorry that it took this long to do part two because we did talk about doing the part two after the first one, and now finally here we are. A lot of great shows in between, so no, well, no problem you. there. Thank you so much. Yep. All right, James, so I'm going to be yep. bugging you again literally in a couple of weeks for you to come back on with me, and we'll talk about the uh, the training center with all of its activity. Tell Logan I said hi. Tell, well, tell her hi back since she said hi to me. Yeah, and I know that that was just for me. That was so cool. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was just saying hi. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, James. Have a good day. You too. Well, I'm so-and-so. I was given this name by my parents. I've been to such and such a college. I've done these things in my profession. I produce a little bark. The Buddha says, forget it. That's not true. That's some of the story. That's all gone. That's all past. I want to see the real you you are now. 
where he says, uh, when you settle down in the train, you can read your newspaper and uh, so on. You are not the same person who uh, a little while ago left the platform. If you think you are, you are linking your moments up in the chain. And this is what binds you to the wheel of birth and death. But when you know that every moment in which you are is the only moment, this comes into Zen, a master will say to somebody, oh, get up and walk across the room. And he comes back and he says, where are your footprints? They've gone. So where are you? Who are you? When we are asked who we are, we usually give a kind of recitation of a history. Straight, 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 straight.